Hi everyone, welcome back to the Capacity channel. Today I want to talk about the extra settings that are in the object type settings for any of your custom object types. If taking notes for meetings feels very different to taking notes on your interests, there are things that you can apply in the settings that make that easier to work with and better to work with because it will make sure that each of these types are treated in a way that really makes sense for them rather than the kind of middle ground that works for quite a lot of types. Most of this applies to the custom object types only because the basic object types aren't fully customizable. So we'll be focusing mainly on the custom ones, but you can do the exact same thing as I'll show you in this video, where you can open the object type settings for each type. And if there's a setting that you'd like to apply, you can see which options you have per type as well. So from previous videos, we probably know this screen quite well. The naming convention is um, set. You can choose the emoji, or if you're on a paid plan, you can choose icons as well can choose the color and here is where you edit your properties. I've shown a lot about properties in previous videos so I won't focus on them today but just a reminder that there are now um, AI autofill options for most properties so if you're looking for a way to have AI enhance your workflows um, check out the videos that I will link somewhere useful so you can see how they can be used and if you want to add them to these properties. But we'll focus mainly on the things below the property section, which you can see here. So first up is the calendar setting. This will show up in any of your object types that have a date time property. So because I have time frame, I can see this. Now, when you have a date time property within one of your custom object types, you will get one of these buttons at the top of your daily note. And what that means is you can quickly create an object of that type where the date property that you've applied is automatically filled in. So let's say that I have a meeting today, that date is already filled in because I created it from today. And it works like that for any calendar day. So if I wanted to write up some meeting notes from a couple of weeks ago, I can click meeting there and this time is linked to that date. So whichever date you're on, wherever you click the button from, that date is applied to that property but you won't always need the ability to create multiple entries for that day. And in fact, for this particular use case, that wouldn't be useful to have multiple entries on this day. So to show you this, this is a day object which can be used for daily tracking. And because it has a date time property, it's attached to the daily note in a button and I can quickly create that and track things throughout the day. But I only want one daily tracking object per day, otherwise I'm not like unifying that information and that doesn't help with the use case it's intended for. So you can choose to only be allowed to create one object of that type per day, just with this simple setting here. So if I go to today and click day, and I'll use my template, which will fill in the date. I'll show you that shortly. Um, it's filled in the date automatically for me and now I can do my tracking. But if I go back to the daily note, I no longer have that button because I've already created that daily tracking object. And that's what that setting's doing. It's saying only create one, don't let me create any more. And that's really helpful for this. Whereas for these other object types, I haven't put that same restriction on because it's not beyond the realms of possibility that I could have several meetings in a day or read several things. So that is an option that you can choose to apply, but it's probably most related, as mentioned, to things connected to your calendar. The next thing is the default link view. Now, object types and objects are obviously core to capacities, but so is linking. And it's really the combination of those that makes it so powerful. And we make sure that links don't just have to look like this. This is a standard looking link. It's useful. It takes me to where I want to go but you can do more with links, they can look good. So if you're in its own block, so I got to that just with enter, and I linked to that very same page, it has a different view. This is an embed view, I can write things down here, or if I just want to display it, I could change the view to be a small card or to a wide card, etc. And you might find over time that you're always changing objects of a certain type to a specific view. 
So for me with projects, it's an embed view. For quotes, it's a small card view. And if you're noticing that pattern, you can open up the object settings and go to this link view section and just choose the link that you are always wanting to use. That does not mean that you can't then change it again if for a different reason you want a different view on a certain occasion, but it will save you some clicks, it saves you some time, and obviously that helps us with general efficiency. And again, these are settings applied per object type. So as mentioned, I like my projects to be um, in the embed view, but when I'm taking reading notes and I like a quote, I always like to have it embedded as a quote like this. And you can see the difference between that small card quote here and this one, which is a standard, what we call inline link. And I want to change that. And by definition, my quotes are always going to be embedded in this small card view when they're in their own block. This technically isn't, whereas these ones are, and I think they look much more inviting and enjoyable for me when I'm reviewing my notes. So that is the link view section. The next are templates, and I have got an entire video on these from last year, which I will link. Nothing's changed in there. But just to show you what you can do, um, I have a template for today. And the reason I've set this template up is so that I can quickly have the date kind of fill in and format itself nicely, because we have something called date variables that can go into the title. I'll link to the specific place in the docs that shows you all the options, but you can apply that variable into a template. You could add a cute little message and then that template is available for you to use over and over again with your date object types. You don't have to use the date variables in your titles. You can use templates for other things and that's what you'll see more in depth in the video that I did previously. Then we come into the layout options. So we'll have a look at the page layout first. We have four different types and they fit different types of information really nicely, as you could imagine. So for my reading notes, for example, I really enjoy the encyclopedia view because it makes me feel like I've kind of got all the information in front of me so I can really like dig into it because this is the start of my note taking process. So I like having the properties on the left hand side, the blocks in the middle and then the right sidebar. You can still close all of these and just focus on the actual notes and open them as well. So that's the encyclopedia layout, but my quotes are the index card layout. So it's a smaller space. The properties are, if I had any, would be in the left hand side here, but I don't have any. So I can hide that section and just see the quote itself. It's like a bigger version of the small card, which I enjoy. Whereas this is the standard layout for my books where I see the few properties I've got and then my notes beneath that. And then the final one is profile, which we have for people. And that gives you this round circle and the properties on the left hand side. So you can broadly choose which layout works the best. And you might also want to take a look at the other settings, which especially for this profile one, where you can make the image fill the circle. So I can either display the full image, which doesn't quite fit because it's not a circle, or I can click crop to fill the available space and it does that. You can also choose to always set the width of the page to like a wide layout or have it centered like it is now. So wide looks like that and centered is there. The wide layout I find works really well for things like projects because I typically like embed quite a lot of things within that project. Um, I haven't done too much here, but it's good to be able to have extra space to sort of move things around and to create new columns as well. So by choosing this wide layout section, I just save myself a click when I'm setting up my project pages and embedding all the things that are relevant to what I'm working on. Then the final thing is the customizable card views as well. When you're in the wall or the gallery view, for any of your custom object types, you can choose to customize this view. So what you need to think about is what information is useful for you to see at a glance because it's this information that is available to you without having to open the object. So I've chosen just to show the picture, um, the object type and the tags, but equally you could choose to add others, whatever works. And this card is then applied everywhere. So. If I were to embed 
a link to Albert Einstein anywhere and choose this small card view, that's what I see. So it's just copied everywhere that you use this small card view as well. So because it's here, you can also choose to customize it from here. So you can add things and take them away as you need. One question that does come up quite a lot with these people object types is how I get the circular image onto the card. And that's by choosing to show the content preview instead of the picture. You can choose whatever looks the best to you and play around, see what you like. And again, you can do this for each of your custom object types. So that takes us to the bottom of the object type settings. And now you can see all the things that you can choose to take your object types further and to structure them further in the way that will help you take notes on that type of information a bit better. All of the things that I showed today were in the custom object type section, but as mentioned, some of these settings are available for the basic object types, such as web links and pages. So just have a look through them so you find what helps you the most, because that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to set up some structure that helps you get to your notes faster in the way that works for you the best. So that's everything for this video. I hope it taught you something new. And if you've got any questions about it, of course, please let me know in the comments below.